Hi, it's Hal from Light with another video recap of Monday Night Light, our free weekly web seminar held every Monday from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Pacific. This week's topic, using Lightroom to take one of our master files, resize it for output using the print module. You know that last week we discussed using Lightroom's export functionality to take one of our images and send it external to Lightroom for display on the web or via projector. This week, we're going to keep that image inside of Lightroom and send it to the printer with the print module. To resize the image, it's actually fairly simple. It can be a bit confusing at first because when we look in the library develop module, there's no reference to size on the images at all. In fact, Lightroom operates in most cases size independent as well as output sharpening independent. We know that's the case because we don't output sharpen until we size. To size an image, all you need to do within Lightroom is select a particular image, whether we happen to be in the grid view, the loop view of the library module, or we could grab any image from the film strip or from develop and send it over to the print module. Now we send an image to the print module by either clicking print within the identity plate, or if you have that hidden, as I oftentimes do, by using the keyboard shortcut of control or command P. Control for Windows, command for the Mac. Once the image is here within the print module, all we need to do are a couple steps and the image will be sized. A lot simpler, in many cases, just as effective and more efficient than use doing this in Photoshop. The first place we visit is via Page Setup. And when I click Page Setup, I bring up a print setup for my operating system and I'm allowed to choose a specific paper size. For our example here, I'll just grab a paper size of 13 by 19. When I hit OK, notice that the interface has changed and Lightroom is going to begin to size the image. But if you notice that what I had done before I did anything, I had a 10 by roughly a 6 and 2 thirds by 10 image, and after I went to a 13 by 19 media, I have the exact same thing. That's because I've only done half the process so far. So the first half, we tell Lightroom what size paper we're using. The second part is to go over to the right panel, the Layout tab, and set a specific cell size. The cell size you can think of as principal area on our media. To do this, I like to take my margins and slide them all the way to the left so they're at the minimums. And then I'll go down into the cell size and tell Lightroom how big I would like this image on the media. So under a 13 by 19, I'll typically do a cell size of about 18 by 12. Immediately once I do 18 by 12, Lightroom has resized the image and I can see that because it's fitting on the media now. So what's going on behind the scenes? Lightroom takes my page size as well as the cell size and then uses an adaptive bicubic algorithm to resample the image and recreate exactly what I need. What is it that I need? Well, a specific image here of 12 by 18 inches, but we know that to resample, it's got to have some other piece of information, and we find that down here in print job. That is a print resolution. How many pixels per inch to make up this 12 by 18 inch document? Once we have a physical size in inches and a resolution in pixels per inch, Lightroom has all the information it needs to use its algorithms to resize the image in a very effective and, as you can tell, very efficient manner. Look at how fast that was. What resolution do we need? Uh, kind of up to you. It goes back to a lot of discussions we had before. If you want to follow the basic recommendations for an Epson printer, 360 pixels per inch. For the Canon, either 200 or 300. For our example tonight, I'll just use 200 pixels per inch. And it's just that easy. I take my size independent file that was living in Lightroom's catalog. Well, actually, the source file is on my hard drive. The develop settings are in the Lightroom catalog bring all that over here to the print module, tell it media size, cell size, resolution, Lightroom figures out the rest. So let's do another one of those examples real quick. Say I wanted to put this onto an 8.5 by 11 sheet of media. First go to print setup, probably page setup, choose the appropriate size, up to layout, and give it a cell. So I'll say 10 by 8, that's fairly common. And when I do that, I can see that I get an image that's 10 by 6 and roughly 2 thirds. 
I know that to keep this process going, I have to make sure that, yep, 200 print resolution, it's still there. Oh, by the way, it's a sticky setting, so you know that it's there from before. That's all there is to it. To go from, take this image, print on 13 by 19, I tell it Super B Media, a cell size of 18 by 12, a resolution, it does it. When I want to send it to 8.5 by 11, 8.5 by 11 Media, a cell size of 10 by 8, same resolution, and it resizes it very very quick effective and efficient it does a tremendous job making this happen so the question that always comes up at this point is how I have a 10 by 8 cell size but my image is showing 10 by 6 and 2 thirds what's going on well remember that you have an image that has a certain aspect ratio so many units high by so many units wide this is a 2 by 3 aspect ratio which roughly equates to this image size if I wanted to fill my full cell size of 10 by 8, I would need a 4 by 5 aspect ratio. Now I could do that, but in order to do it, I'd have to go back to the develop module and invoke my crop overlay, grab the aspect, and set 4 by 5, and then try and crop this image as best I can. Now you can see on this image it's really not going to work because I didn't shoot it such that a 4 by 5 is going to work. So I'm probably not going to get that 8 by 10. If I want an 8x10, I can maybe grab a different image. There's a 4x5 of this Alaskan Malamute. And yeah, since I now have a usable composition after I crop to this aspect ratio, it's going to be real simple when I go back to the print module via controller command P, 8x10. So it fills it completely. The final thing we need to chat about here in this discussion is output sharpening. And the output sharpening discussion in Lightroom goes very, very quickly because we really only have two things that we need to decide. First of those is a media type, either matte or glossy. These are very general. Glossy contains gloss, semi-gloss, pearl, satin, and luster, and anything really that's going to use photo black ink. Matte media, on the other hand, is going to be anything that uses matte black ink, such as velvet fine art, maybe a Somerset velvet, watercolor, black and white, all sorts of different media types. It makes a difference which of these you choose, so make sure you get it right. The matte media selection is going to give more sharpening, so if you choose matte when you're printing on glossy, there's going to be an issue. Our next choice, once we have a specific media type, and I'll just leave it at glossy, is how much sharpening, what intensity, do I want low, standard, or high? In most cases, light recommends using standard. The only time I would modify that recommendation is if once you print, you see that it's too much, back it off, or if you have a print that's dominated by one of those five things that we don't sharpen, sky, areas of constant color, flowing water, out of focus areas, or human skin, initially set that sharpening to low. That's all there is in Lightroom. Very effective, very efficient. Notice we do give up a little bit of control, but boy, we make up for that in speed, and it doesn't get much more efficient than that. Thanks a lot. Have a great night. I'll see you next week.